I get a lot of questions on my stance on melted bricks, so just a short miscellaneous one today so I can clarify my position on this. But before that, Wooden Nichols and I are intending on putting out a regular podcast chat where we talk over a range of different topics. Part 1 was released yesterday. We're still finding our feet, but each episode will be released exclusively on his channel and not this one, so make sure you go over there, subscribe and keep an eye out. We'll be discussing a whole range of different topics going forward and we're aiming to not have too much crossover with the topics I'm exploring here. So if you have anything you'd like us to discuss, drop a comment on his video and let us know. So the first thing to say is that these bricks seem to be found in their highest quantities in America. But they are found elsewhere and in Europe. I have one myself. Here's a wall composed of these mangled, twisted bricks. And when I saw this, I noticed that one, these bricks do not make up the entirety of the wall. The mangled ones are only here and there. And two, that there is no trace of mortar. This told me immediately that these bricks were salvaged elsewhere and this wall assembled after. So what are these bricks? They have a name and they're very well known in the brick industry. They are called clinker bricks. There are still companies that sell them today. Clinker bricks form when wet clay bricks are exposed to excessive heat during the firing process. They are less melted, but vitrified, and it occurs when the wet brick is too close to the heat source. No clinker is the same, it depends on the composition of the metals in the clay. They did go by other names. In an English 1836 penny cyclopedia, they are called burrs, black looming masses of vitrified brick that are worth 10 shillings a load. Burrs or clinker brick are those which are much vitrified in the fire. Sometimes 100,000 of them have run together in one mass. Brick having a smoothed or glazed surface are sometimes made. This is done in the burning. In America, different regions had different names for them. In the Hudson River Valley, they were called lammies. A 1902 article, Brick and Bricklaying, describes them as crooked, twisted, and misshapen things which are not fit for the commonest speculative tenement house. They used to be regarded as defective and sold for non-structural purposes. Manufacturers had between four and five different grades of brick. They ranged from best, first class, second class, third class and clinkers. And as Akhtar Alafia states, they were also used as grog. Grog is a broken and ground waste product that was rejected during the course of manufacturing due to structural defects, such as cracking, giving the brick poor tensile strength. Once crushed, the clinker brick pieces were used in a new batch of raw clay to produce brick. And America is where the clinker really took off. It started in 1730 with the Jean van Huysen house. The blackened letters here are formed from clinkers that have been used decoratively. And as the 19th century continued toward the turn of the 20th century, clinker bricks became fashionable. A 1907 Oakland Tribune article states that the rough clinker brick in the foundation adds greatly to the rustic beauty of the exterior. Clinkers became a key aspect of the arts and crafts architectural movement that used them in a decorative way. These warped, broken discards have become the aristocrats of all brick. And why? Because they are the product of the fire, of that purgatory which burns out the baser qualities, yet refines and ennobles, but in passing it leaves its mark. These brick remind one of the wrinkled visage of age, wherein is recorded much suffering. These bricks are not pretty, they are beautiful, and in that deep true sense of beauty as appreciated by the artist. They have character, they tell a story, the story of the fire. As there is more genuine beauty in the wrinkled visage of age than in the pretty symmetry of youth. So also do these warped and twisted bricks surpass their precise neighbours. They became fashionable, poetic, and started being manufactured on purpose. Standard bricks would sell in Los Angeles during 1915 at $4.50 for every thousand, but $9 for every thousand of clinker, despite being generally useless and defective. The Ada Brick Company advertised in their local newspaper, the rough surface of clinker brick gives a popular soft, antique finish. Clinker brick is a sound investment, an opportunity to create beauty in your home and secure permanence. So it became fashionable, and a key aspect of decorating the facades and columns of houses to give an organic, antique and old look. This is why it's present on so many of these kind of buildings. 
because it gives an antique finish. These are not centuries old structures, but late 19th and early 20th century builds, decorated with clinker to give an antique feel. Basically, clinkers are defective, but they were used in a decorative way. If the clinkers weren't entirely defective, and it was only the edges, then they may have been used here or there in areas of a structure that would not compromise integrity. And these decorative buildings demonstrate that. That's why you see vitrified brick here and there. Bricks can vitrify in something like a kiln, or a chamber, because kilns get exceptionally hot. But again, it isn't seen in all brick kilns. It depends on the mineral composition of the brick. They also vitrify in certain sections where the heat is more intense. But the heat has to be intense. The bricks used in fireplaces and chimneys don't usually vitrify. We are talking about very intense heat to achieve something like this. It's quite obvious these are not a result of a cataclysm. Any cataclysm that produces such intense heat would not affect structures in such a partial, selective way. England is full of old red brick buildings and there is very little clinker action going on. It is my opinion that clinkers from the 1700s onwards were used as one, salvaged fillers in some structures where structural integrity was not compromised as to not waste them and have to make fresh bricks. And two, as decorative fashionable facades stemming from the arts and crafts movement. They can be used in all kinds of ways and shapes. The really creative stuff would probably need to be reinforced with some kind of metal rods because clinkers are unstable. And I know it probably doesn't make sense why use clinkers decoratively, but fashions are a lot of the time weird and don't make sense. It's the fashion at the minute to have blue hair. But this is where I think it gets interesting. There could be an argument that we see so many clinker bricks in America because there were previous civilizations or settlements who built with brick present before the Europeans took over and their structures were raised to the ground, burned and then later recycled under the guise of fashion. This would be hard to evidence properly, but Conspiracy R Us put out a great video on old world dumping grounds in America. It's worth watching. Clinkers could very well be brick remains from previous settlements that they tried to erase by burning. Are there any huge dumping grounds of clinkers? It shouldn't be ruled out. It's true that the best and most economical way to dispose of these bricks would be to turn them into grog or to crush them, but perhaps it wasn't feasible to do this to all of them. And they had to find a way of recycling them, hence the fashion, as a way of reusing them, normalizing them and covering their tracks. There is a huge research project waiting for someone or multiple people to start documenting the clinkers. 18th and 19th century bricks will often, but not always, carry imprints of the company name on them. Are there any clinkers that carry company stamps? It would require a lot of field work. I'd love to have a go myself, but I don't have access to America. If no imprints are found on clinkers, then in my opinion that provides a good foundation to support the hypothesis that they belong to earlier and perhaps undocumented settlements, structures, and have been recycled. Another potential argument is that the American clinkers are the result of a cataclysm before the Europeans arrived and they have been recycled and reused. But again, any cataclysm of such heat would not partially vitrify and be selective in terms of what areas of the bricks were affected. It would melt everything. Like Wise Up said, there would be no sand in the world. It would have all turned to liquid and solidified after. If there was some kind of heat cataclysm, then in my opinion it would have also had to have taken place before any of these structures were around. Before the cathedrals, the classical stuff, the kilns, they would not survive it. There are brick structures from the 1400s still standing and intact. So I think these are recycled defective clinkers that have been used decoratively, but there is a chance that before they were part of something else, and that's been purposefully hidden. And although bricks have potential to store electricity, I don't think old world bricks did store electricity, and here's why. The current research demonstrating the ability of red bricks to store energy hinges on two key components. The first is the brick's red pigment. It's the iron oxide component of the clay. And the second is this technology called polymer PEDOT, or PDOT. 
PDOT is composed of nanofibers that can penetrate the internal porous network of a brick. The polymer coating remains confined in the brick and acts as an iron sponge that could store and conduct electricity. The bricks will not store energy without this nanofiber coating. It needs to be primed with this, and as you can see here, this is a brick before, this is partially saturated with the fibers, and here is what it looks like when fully saturated and primed to store energy. The brick turns to a very dark blue-black color. And this is technocratic stuff. Smart bricks, smart cities, smartphone. There is no evidence of nanotechnology being used in these old bricks. I think the most likely explanations for clinkers is that they are genuine defects from the kilns and that there is a strong possibility that a lot of them could have been burned in an attempt to erase previous structures or hide the trace of previous settlements. You never know, but recycling bricks might have been one of the ways America got off to such a rapid start in terms of construction. This doesn't mean, however, that these old world bricks were not used creatively in a whole host of different ways. For instance, in agriculture, these are 19th century hothouse walls. They were designed with deliberate cavities to allow the heat from the furnaces to circulate around the inside, to heat up the bricks, which in turn encouraged the growth of plants out of season. They aren't melted or vitrified though. I might do some more videos on alternative uses of bricks in the future. I'll leave links to some websites on clinker bricks below. There's a Wikipedia page, and there's also a great 100-page research paper on them, with an extensive bibliography for further investigation and reading. I'll leave it there for today. Uh, remember to go over to Wooden Nichols and subscribe, and I think the next one is going to be a labyrinth video. It might be Shadow Rome. I've got two in the works, but I'm um, just going a little bit slowly with them, so we'll see. Anyway, keep well and have a good day.